Ooh, welcome back everybody to the Wicked Bros Outdoors channel. This is Caleb again, just a little another fishing instructional video, I guess you could say. Um, today I'm going to be getting into uh, just bass fishing basics, honestly. Uh, basically what I got, and I have this wall right here. There it is. Right there. This was an easy little project that I came up with. Um, I saw it on a YouTube video, and I was like, you know, if I can do that for cheap, which I did. Um, so I did it. And uh, it's just a pegboard, how you would see on a store, except for it's made out of wood here. I just got um, like 2 by 4 stuff like that, and uh, I put one on top here, the middle, and the bottom for support. That way I could stick it to my wall, catch the beams on it, and it's really sturdy, can hold quite an amount of weight. But uh, yeah, it's right there. It's got all the lures that I currently possess, and, and some. Also has my line right there. It's got my Shop Carl's calendar right there. So, um, and I got my rods and reels sitting right there in a little storage container right there. But, uh, yeah, it's a little nice unit there. Um, it only took me about a day to build. I just got wood screws and uh, Gorilla Wood Glue for an adhesive so I could not only, um, screw it into the wall but also have an adhesive to get these boards on the actual board itself get the 2x4s glued in so it has a little more support underneath it so anyways um we're gonna get into some of the lures that i have that i uh, got off of guggen squad which i highly recommend and this also like i said in the previous video this is not at all sponsored by any of them by their companies or anything like that um i just want to do reviews on them because i personally love them i mean they're they are awesome lures. I mean, they've never really failed me unless I was just throwing them on the wrong days. But regardless, I um, always had something to throw in my uh, arsenal that was from Guggen Squad that would eventually catch fish. And to turn, like under the right conditions, each of these baits are killer. But uh, right here, I got the lipless crank baits here just hanging off the wall. And I got a smaller one back here. But then, I don't know if it'll focus well using my phone. Um, I got jigs. Um, I got my uh, crankbaits, jerkbait. Got frog underneath that. And I got a smaller rattle, rattling crankbait here. Lipless crankbaits is what they're called. And then I got some smaller profile deep diving crankbaits. And then I got my line, obviously. And got some older jigs here. You can see those. So uh, we're going to get into what I got in the giant box, which I also got. Try not to... That's going to fall. Yep. Called it. Anyways, it came with a fanny pack from Guggen Squad because they are awesome. So, without further ado, let's get into today's video. Ah, oh, that's more comfortable. Okay, oh, I gotta get the baits down. Alright, so this box came with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it came with seven different baits, all for different purposes. There's a Jig there. Why don't you just take the peg off? Okay, now that you can see them a little better, um, I need to fix this actually. Uh, I think that's good, maybe? No, yes, no, yes, maybe. No, I can't see my head. I will edit this out. Actually, that, that might be perfect right there.
Yeah, that's good. Uh, that, that's even better. I really thoroughly enjoy this fanny pad, by the way. Look, it's got the logo right there. Guggen Squad. Awesomely. Like, well built, I would say myself. And throw, like, your soft plastics in there if you want. Or if you have your baits still in the package, you can throw that in there or whatever. You know, you can throw, like, pliers, uh, utilities that you would use. Um, pretty neat. I love it. I haven't worn it and used it yet quite, but uh, I definitely will be using that in later videos. I will just uh, throw that back there. So today, um, obviously going over the baits that I own, that I have here with me, um, I think this was for fall fishing. So um, let me put the crank baits here. Uh, this was a fall fishing package, so it's going to have baits that are specifically di uh, designed, excuse me, for fall fishing tactics, you know, perfect baits that are good for when that weather starts to drop and the water temperature starts to drop and everything and the weather starts changing and the fish start, you know, going deeper into the water or whatnot. And they start, they start, they go on a feeding craze, like even more than they would. There's summer, summer, they got to springtime where they start feeding a lot because they're spawning. They need to get rid of bluegill on their bed. So there's feeding on a lot of bluegill, which is when the black and blue colors and the bluegill colors come to play and all that. But we'll, we'll get to that when it comes springtime. This is basically just a recap of last year. Um, I didn't get out much, really didn't, but, um, these baits right here are good for fall fishing, as I said, when they start going on a feeding craze and to stock up for the winter time, because that's when they slow down and yeah, getting ready for springtime, I guess. So we'll start. Well, we'll start off with the basic ones. Um, popping frogs, um, very, very good baits, uh, definitely for summertime, obviously. But they also are very effective during the fall time. And if you want, you can go ahead and look up that. I'm, I'm not really good on frogs, um, except for top water on hot summer days. So, but I guess these are very, very good baits for fall time, especially the popping one. Any top water, really. Um, yeah. But uh, if you notice right here, probably the coolest thing is how they literally write eat me it's a little as they say it's a little message for them for the bass it says eat me but uh popping frogs are just they're just fun to play around with honestly like they um they got the little cup as any popper would to uh, when you uh twitch it you pop it um water gets into that little mouth there and it just makes a big bubble of water and stuff like that really cool and that's what it, that's what brings up the fish Especially during the summertime, they'll see that action there and they'll be like, hey, there's a nice little meal there. So they'll see that water splash, make a loud popping noise, is why it's called a popping frog, and they'll go after it. Come up in the water, suck it up in. Uh, one thing I will say about top water though, um, top waters, especially with the hooks and the way they're made, it's a soft, it's a soft body. So whenever they come up, this squishes down and that sets the hooks free and they're loose hooks anyways but um when they bite it they come up not only are they sucking up the lure but they're also sucking up a lot of water which is why you see that big splash and that's why sometimes hook up ratios with top water lures especially with the squishy bodies um are sometimes not all there because they're not only sucking up the lure but they're sucking in a bunch of water as well for that um, bait to digest in their body and so sometimes you just got to use once you figure out how to set the hook on it, which it takes a little bit of time. But if you're really quick at it, you can get it down to you can get it pretty quick. Um, so that's why uh, hookup ratios aren't exactly all there. But when you did get a hookup, it is these hooks are insanely sharp. I've poked myself a thousand times with them just trying to tie it and Overall, these are very, very good topwater fogs here. So, I highly recommend them. Obviously, during the summertime as well, when the summertime blow-ups happen on the really, really hot days where there's, like, no clouds. Um, those are the best times to throw it. But, yeah. So, that's it for the popping frog, I guess. Um, 
we'll go ahead and actually we'll just put that over there for now. So next we'll move on to I will do the crankbaits. These, this is the Grand Banner here. It is a um, three inch, three fourth of an ounce uh, crankbait. It's a square bill and it goes anywhere from three to seven feet. So um, when you're fishing fall bass, uh, they tend to go deeper down into the water because the temperature is changing. So this is a very good way to reach those deeper fish, even bigger fish as well. And uh, this is the then this is a sexy shad I want to say as they call it yeah and um, you can really cover so much water with this I mean you can throw some like I throw 10 pound fluorocarbon all the way it reaches your uh, max depth because it's a lighter fluorocarbon but also fluorocarbon sinks so it really allows you to get down to those deeper depths where those fish are um, hanging around at and you can cover so much water there's if you're throwing lighter line, as I said, 10 pound fluorocarbon, you can get a you can get a farther cast. Um, I use a seven foot, seven three, I think it is seven three, medium heavy rod. It's a Berkeley shock stick, and I use a um, it's either a six four to one or a five something. I have it here. I have a jig tied on it. Uh, it's an Abu Garcia. Black Max, you can get these really cheap. Um, they're very good quality reels if you're just starting out. Uh, this is a 6 4 to 1, or you can throw it on a uh, 5 4 1 or a 5 3 1. Real slow. About took out my ceiling there. A slower reel. And you can get very, very good casts out of it. Like I said, you can cover a lot of water with these square bills. And the difference between the square bale and the round bale, which this is the recon, is the square bale is going to hit off of branches, it's going to hit off debris and stuff like that. So if you're fishing areas that has like laydowns inside, in, in the water column where there's branches, uh, sticks, stuff like that, even grass really, um, that square bale is going to hit right over top of it and you're going to you're gonna get some grass on the hooks and eventually it's going to happen, it never fails. But... If you're throwing around structure, I think these even have rattles on it, in it, actually. But that square, that square bale just allows it to just hit off so much structure so you're not getting hooked onto branches and stuff like that. And it even has, you should be able to hear that, it's got a really big bead in it, I guess you could say, probably a lead weight. That also allows it to get down into that depth as well. And gives it that weight to get a far cast and cover a lot of water and also when it's in there it's going to have a tight wobble um this is the grand bank yeah so it's going to have a little bit of a wide wobble but it's not going to be real wide either they also make the flat banners which is a flat sided crankbait this has a, a round side and the difference is the fact that when it's a flat sided crankbait it's going to have a really tight wobble and it really gets those fish triggered when they're on the move looking for food but this has a big knocker in it, I guess you could say. So it's going to make some noise down in there in the water. Then next here, I have the Guggen Squad Recon. And it is also in the Sexy Shad. Um, it is a 2 and 3 fourth inch long bait. It weighs 5 eighths of an ounce. And it goes anywhere from 8 to 12 feet. Like I said, again, 10 pound fluorocarbon, that 6, 4 to 1 or 5, 3 or 5, 4 to 1 gear ratio reel. So you can have a nice slow retrieve and stuff like that and also cover a lot of water. And I did not... Where's my knife? There it is. I did not open this one yet. At least maybe I did. I don't know. There we go. I got it. This one I apparently never opened. It's still taped, packaged. Ah, uh, packaged. Yeah. There it is right there. And as you can see, it's got a real long bale. 
So this is for open water, like straight up. There's really deep water, really open. There's not much structure around. It's just covering open water. And this is really going to get that water, that um, bait far down into the water. If you're, um, I wouldn't say fishing off the bottom. You obviously want it above the bottom, but you're fishing really deep water, you know, and um, you can throw this if you're just fishing a pond, obviously, if it's deep, but um, these are a lot more effective if you're out on a boat and you got a fish finder and you got um, to see how deep they are and where they are at, and that way you can really get um, good bites off of this, but this is definitely a very solid bait, get 8 to 12 feet out of it. Also, if you don't know how deep it goes, and like if you forget or whatever, um, it has it written. If it'll focus. It's got it written right there, so it'll tell you how deep it goes and stuff like that. If you have a bunch of them in your tackle box and you don't know which one to pick and they all look the same, it's got it written on there, 8 to 12 feet. So that's it for the lipped crankbaits. Now let's get into the lipless crankbait, which I did not open either. And as you saw in the intro, um, I have bigger ones. I forget. Um, I just know they're the bigger size. This is a smaller profile. This is a three eighths ounce, and it is two and a four, two and a quarter inch long. And these, as soon as they hit the water, they sink. I mean, there are some rattle traps. I guess you could call them lipless crankbaits. They have a lot of different names. Some of them will, uh, they will sink, but it's going to be really slow. Uh, slow. These ones right here, as soon as they hit the water, they immediately sink and they go, they drop. I mean, it has such a great fall rate. Um, sometimes I like it falling real slow, but at the same time, if you're just trying to cover water, you're trying to power fish, fishing real fast, you're not trying to slow it down or anything. I mean, like they're moving like crazy down there. Um, this is perfect because as soon as it hits that water, it's going to go immediately down until it hits the bottom. Uh, this right here, you can yo-yo it. Um, that's what... Uh, now, what's his name? Mike Iaconelli. I remember now. Uh, that's what he does. It's, it's one of the most effective ways to fish a lipless crankbait. Is you just yo-yo it. And that is simply just letting it fall. And then you move your rod tip up. You let it fall again. You retrieve a little bit. Slack line. Yank it up again. And then it's just going to sink back down. And when you're yanking it up. It's going to do a lot of rattling. I mean, you can hear that. It's loud. And it's really loud in the water. And that really irritates the fish. And they will go after it just to get it to, I guess you could say, shut up. Um, but yeah, that's really going to attract them if they're, um, you know, if they're far away from where you're fishing at. This is definitely going to bring them in. And then they'll see it. And then they're going to attack it. And get a lot of reaction strikes out of it. I mean... I got pictures, and it was it was it was a decent sized bass. Honestly, a fish is a fish, and it's really fun. But I saw this one bass. I was out of a little pond, and I had a smaller. It wasn't this. It was a different crank, uh, lipless crankbait. But um, you can really rip these out of grass, and if you throw this in a grassed area where there's like hydrilla and stuff like that, and you let it sink to the bottom, and then you rip it out. Sometimes there'll be fish sitting in that hydrilla, and they'll be you know looking for natural forage stuff like that. And if you throw this in there and you rip it out, let it sink back down in again, if there's a fish sitting in there and it sees that, it'll turn around like so quick and it'll snatch that. And that's what's called a reaction strike. They're just doing it out of reaction. It's more or less to defend off something that's coming at them. It's more of like a, hey, I'm right here, get out of my area. And so they'll reaction strike it and you can get a lot of hookups like i threw that lipless crankbait right into this little grass bed there of like hydrilla and in a matter of seconds i let it sit as soon as i ripped it and it was really shallow so it was almost like a top water strike i mean that thing just hammered it and 
honestly, it was a really neat experience. And because of how it felt like a topwater smack, I mean, my heart was racing. Anybody knows who fishes topwater a lot. Your heart gets pumping when you hear that big sploosh and that fish coming up for it. It was pretty awesome. But anyways, uh, yeah, um, for this right here, you can use a medium heavy for all my crankbaits, even jerk baits as well, at least a uh, hard plastic jerk baits. I use a medium heavy seven foot three rod. So that's the only medium heavy one I have right now. And I use the same gear ratio reel. Don't really do too, don't really do much fancy things with it, I guess, or whatever. I'm not like too and I'll have like a lot of reels and a lot of, you know, rods for different situations with different lines and stuff like that. I keep it simple for now, but, um, yeah, so I keep it the same for any hard plastics. I even use that for like jigs and stuff like that too. If I'm using light jigs and um, just regular flipping jigs or whatever, but I also do have a um, a seven foot six heavy action rod, and that's specifically for my uh, jigs, especially even my top water as well. Which I need to get a new gear ratio reel because uh, this one's pretty slow, but um. And that's when I'm throwing jigs and grass, throwing top water, frogs on lily pads and stuff like that. Because as soon as they gulp it, they bring it back down and you got to pull it through all that grass and stuff like that. And if you're using a lighter reel or a lighter rod and lighter line, you're not going to get really a good hookup ratio. Nor are you going to get that fish out of there because he's going to be one of going back into that grass. So... You got to really fight it, and if you don't have the right setups, you're going to lose fish. You're going to even have snap-offs, and you can even have a rod break. So, that's pretty much it for the lipless. Let's uh, get to the jerk bait here. This is the Junior Scout, so they make a bigger version of it. This is um, goes 3 to 5 feet. Uh, it's 3.5 inches long. It's a 3 ounce, 3, three eighths of an ounce, excuse me, uh, jerk bait. Now, for all crankbaits, even jerkbaits and stuff like that, um, I tie what is called a loop knot. It has a bunch of different names. And uh, I'll actually do a demonstration as best as I can. Still learning it. I actually still have that tied on. But um, it, it's the best knot by far. Um, for as far as getting the most action out of your crankbait, your jerkbait. Um, basically, it's going to look like that, if you can see that. You'll see that loop and that allows this to move freely all right so like whenever you're whenever you throw whenever you tie it on a crankbait and you have that loop you got that gap in there and that's going to allow that um that bait to get the most action you know to get the most wobble it's going to move freely if you tie a regular clinch knot or um double um what's it called Regardless, if you're throwing like a, if you're tying on a clinch knot or whatever, you're not going to get that action. And sometimes it can even mess up how your bait swims. So if you're throwing that loop knot, it's got all this room to just move around freely. And that's going to get the most action. It's one of the best knots. Um, it's real simple to learn, but it takes a little time to get used to tying it. It's definitely a different knot. And I'll do that later. Uh, cut this off, actually. Same thing, um, 10 pound, 10 pound, 10 pound floor carbon, same rod and reel, 6, 4 to 1 or 5, 4 to 1, doesn't matter. And basically what you do is, is you want to, um, have a fast tip, I think. And you want to just sit there. You just want to, you just want to twitch your rod this way, that way. It doesn't matter. People fish it differently. Some people will just really twitch it hard or twitch it slow or just do like pop 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 or whatever and I'll move and then they'll do pop 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 the other way or they'll just bam bam there's so many different ways you can fish a jerk bait and my personal favorite is you just sit there and you can just pop it it depends on how active the fish are but this also has rattles in it and I mean a lot of Guggen products have rattles in it because rattles are very effective I mean it's going to attract fish anywhere you throw it they're going to hear it, so they're going to come for it. And last but not least, which is personally 
If I had to choose one bait to fish bass for the rest of my life, I have to go with the jig. I mean, it's all year round, definitely effective, very deadly bait. But this one, for example, is the thick flipping jig. And this is going to be used for throwing in the grass. I mean, it's called flipping because you're flipping grass mats, flipping lily pads, hydrilla mats, I mean, stuff like that. And it's real thick. Um, it is a half ounce jig, which half ounce is the happy medium jig. I mean, let me get that open there. This is the black and blue. They make all sorts of different colors. But, uh, yeah, and it's, um, it's got a little curved head. Right there. Focus, please. There you go. Got a little curved head. And uh, there's the weed guard right there, which I, I don't exactly remember how it is, but how it's made or how they use it. But it's got a really big hook. Probably a 4 aught type deal. And also, one of the best things about these baits is you can see that little metal thing sticking out, like, right there where my finger is. And that's really going to keep your bait on. And the best way to do that, which I will show you. Where is it at? These aren't really a part of the video. I'm just using these for demonstration purposes. Um, basically, uh... It's a bait stopper, and the best way to do this is something I learned from Scott Martin and his dad as well. Um, so you're going to want to put the bait on there, obviously, and it came with bandito bugs, black and blue to match them, small ones as well, smaller profile, um, you get the gist of it. Um, so this bait stopper here just keeps the bait in place. So that way, when you're flipping it, throwing it, or whatever, it's not going to, you know, pop off and get out of place as some jigs do or as some soft plastics do. Um, you're going to want to move the weed guard out of the way. Careful not to bend it too much because it can get real loose and fall off. And I've had that happen before and it's not fun. It makes the jig practically useless. Basically, you want to get to the center point of your soft plastic as best as you can. And then twist it to the side so it's, you know, opposite of the way it's going to be hooked. And throw it down. And then find a place. Make sure, keep it as straight as you can because sometimes if you don't get it as straight as you can, it's going to really mess with the action that you get. Then once you get to about... Right there, right before the bait stopper. What I learned is that you can twist it like this, like so. So instead of it being on straight, you twist it to the side. Push it down over the bait stopper, over the top to where it's right on the head. And then just twist it back. And when you twist it back to where it's straight, that was... Oh. This you might have to cut down a little bit to size because, you know, it's a little out of place, but... Basically, you just you pop it, you put it on its side, you push it down over the bait stopper, and then you just twist back in, and that's going to twist right into the soft plastic. So that way, it's going to stay on there. It's locked in, and it's really not going to move at all. Um, you can throw this. Honestly, it's a really great pair. Um, sometimes what I like to do is, is these are like I think five inches. I want to say I'll usually cut a segment off. So it's more compact, but this is what it's going to look like. But that's how you can make the bait stopper really effective. So your bait's not getting, you know, torn off or whatever, or getting out of place. So sometimes when you're flipping it and you get a bite, and you go to set the hook and you miss or whatever, or the fish spits it out, sometimes that sometimes that bait, let me pull it off, is going to get out of shape like this and it's going to come off. And be like that. And that really messes up with your action if you're not sitting there and resetting it. So with that bait stopper that they add on there, you can really get a secure lock on it. So it's not resetting. You don't have to worry about it getting out of place or whatever. But uh, yeah, 
that is the Guggen Squad thick jig right there. Great for flipping. You know, you're just sitting there, you find fish up in the, sh like, in reeds, um, lily pads, stuff like that. You can get in between them. You just sit there, flip it, pitch it, whatever you want to call it, however you call it, whatever. It doesn't really matter. And uh, that half ounce weight is going to sink it down to the bottom. You're going to get some good action out of it. And if you really wanted to, you could swim it a little bit. I mean, there's so many ways you can fish a jig. You can use a flipping jig for about anything, really. But uh, that's about the gist of it. And then these came with it, the pair. Now, these you can throw on a jig. I mean, soft plastics can be used on so many different rigs. There's so many different ways you can do it. And I'll do those in later videos. But uh, for these right now, um, I'll throw these on the jig, obviously. You'll see that come springtime or when it starts warming up soon, hopefully. Had a nasty cold front come in and nasty storms this week. Um, these are the black and blue as well. These are the smaller bandito bugs. They make bigger ones and then they make smaller ones that are more compact. And these are very good for jigs um, as a trailer for it. Even swim jigs, chatter baits. I mean... Any soft plastic can be used as any sort of trailer at any given time. They have very, very good sense on these, and they also put salt in these, so they're going to sink if you just do it weightless. It, uh, it, it honestly all depends on the day, the weather, and how you feel. But uh, there's all of that. Um, I got a lot more different baits. If you want to see more, I got so many different jigs. I just need more colors. I have a bunch of different square bills. I got chatter baits and stuff like that. If you want to see more content like this where I just review baits or whatever and go out and fish with them eventually when it gets warmer, uh, feel free to drop in the comments, you know, if you want to see more content. You know, eventually I'm going to be getting a GoPro. That'll be a good addition. And also, I will be getting the rest of my computer parts very, very soon and also getting my 3D printer because I'm going to attempt to, and I'll make videos out of it, to make my own lure molds, or even my own lures, just out of 3D printed plastic, and see how it works, and see, like, if it does make a difference, obviously I'm going to have to put weights in them, because the plastic is real light, or whatever, you know, and just mess around with, you know, designing my own baits and lures using different molds and stuff like that, different methods, you know, kind of, I guess, changing the game, so, um, Thank you all very much for watching, whoever did. Um, it's appreciated. Uh, make sure you drop a like button. Smash the like button, actually. Um, drop a comment and see what you'd like to see next. Tell us what you want to see. And we'll go ahead and do it for you. And then um, subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, if you want to get a better understanding about just like basics of fishing, you know, like this is stuff that i really love doing and i have a pretty good from what i think a pretty good knowledge base of all of this stuff it's what i've been doing for a few years now and i've been learning so much off of watching pros and stuff like that so um i can help as best as i can from what i know um honestly that's about it so also check out the instagram we'll put that in the link in the description box check out our TikTok. Um, which is not only, it's not only just like fishing and hunting um, content and stuff like that. We also do a lot of stuff at the farm that my buddy has, that one of the members has, Brady. And we also go, we go to Benazet, we go to different places during the summertime. And we're going to try and get as much content as we can for you guys and uh, build this channel up. Like, share to your friends, show them. Because it's not only just going to be fishing content. This is just my little series here. Because this is what I do for the group. And I will be doing a lot more. And we will be dropping a lot more videos. So feel free to, like I said, smash the like button. Share your friends. Um, comment what you want to see next. Comment how you think we did on these videos. So we can make them better for you guys. Because you guys is what we care about. Not us. We're just here to make as much content as we can because it's what we want to do with our lives. So go ahead and uh, be safe, stay wicked, and we'll see you in the next series. Bam.